HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. And by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk, to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we will tell you about the Hopkinton Country Club Charitable Gala, the Walking Monk stopped by the HCAM studios, and as part of the Hopkinton 300th anniversary, a lumberjack show was held. But first, here are some happenings around town you should know about. A special town meeting took place. The two big topics of discussion was the school building project for the new elementary school and Article 8, the Fruit Street Indoor Recreational Facility and Athletics Center. Article 1, the school building project passed. It's over a $43 million project. The new school is slated to open in fall 2018. On Article 8, the Fruit Street Indoor Recreational Facility and Athletic Center, that had the most discussion of the night. It failed the vote for no action requested by the Appropriations Committee. And then a sub-motion passed by the Parks and Recreation Department asking to borrow $500,000 to build the indoor facility, passed a standing vote 154 to 67, despite much debate among town boards. Hey, do you work in finance and you're looking for a job? Well, you could work for the town of Hopkinton. Right now, Hopkinton is looking for a full-time treasurer and collector. They're asking that you apply by November 13th. They're looking for someone with five to seven years of experience in business or financial management, with experience in municipal cash management, and also they're asking that you have a bachelor's degree in a related field, such as business administration or finance, the ability to become bonded, as well as certification as a treasurer and collector from the Mass Treasurer Collectors Association. The salary range of the job is between 70 and 90,000 annually. To see all the happenings from the special town meeting, head over to our website hcam.tv and check out the town meeting updates page. A great turnout was on hand at Field 13 of the high school during a Sunday afternoon for the 300th anniversary Lumberjack Show and demonstration. HCAM News talked to the head of the show, Joe Regan, about the event. Well, when the event was organizing with a lot of help from my friends, just participating in one event, but I've been doing this for 50 years, lumberjack competitions, some years more than others, and then eventually I got into announcing and head judging and organizing things like this. And it's a love, it gets very deep into you, simple as that. You never let it go. All right, uh, can you talk about some of the events that took place here today? Some of the events that we had today, we started off with axe throwing, which is an entry level event if somebody wanted to come up and compete. Uh, yeah, we did two-person cross-cut, we did buck sawing, underhand chopping, springboard chop, disc stacking, which is a crowd pleaser and a real fun event, and we finished up with felling. So it was a good, was a good day. I was thrilled to see the crowd. You never knew how many people were going to come out. So it's been a good day for me for all the work with, that we put into it. Yeah, very happy. Absolutely, and uh, the participants, they must uh, go through a lot of training uh, to do Well, you, you train as much as you want to. There's no professional, well, there is a professional circuit, the Timber Sports Series on TV. But you'll never make a lot of money doing it. You have fun doing it, simple as that. So, uh, you know, the county fairs you go to, you may get 40 bucks here and $50 there, whatever. Uh, but you train on your own. There's no coaches, you do it. It's very much a self-disciplined thing. And it requires a substantial investment after a fashion. You know, these axes, are, if you weren't here, they were four or $500. The cross-cut saws are 1500 Gets expensive, but entry level will be the axe throwing, which is $100 for throwing axe, and it's a great way. The camaraderie is second to none. As much as we helped each other today 
on a demonstration, we also help each other that much in a contest, even though we're competing against one another. All right, and uh, a lot set up here on these uh, the fields here to get ready for this contest. How long did it take you to set everything up? Yeah, well, my uh, son and one of my helpers were here yesterday all day, but probably all told, if you added the hours up, it'd be three full days getting it together. We thank, again, I thank uh, people, uh, John Palmer and Ricky Sofar for coming up on Friday and setting the poles, digging the holes for us. And uh, the school, the uh, Al Rogers building and grounds there for letting us use the field. I just, it was just a, a cooperative effort all around because it's something nobody sees a lot of, I think, so they were interested in it. And it seemed to have gone over well. I was very thrilled with the trend, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we hope you guys are back next year. Well, we'll see. We hope so. All right. Thanks Appreciate it. Thank you. You can view pictures and check out more video from the Lumberjack Show and demonstration on our website, hcam.tv, and also at our YouTube page. Bhakti Marg Swami is a Canadian Hari Krishna monk, also known as the Walking Monk. I got the chance to meet the Walking Monk at the Golden Pond Dance for the Aging Population class, and I asked him to come down to the HCAM studios to talk about why he will soon be walking from New York all the way to Los Angeles. Now, um, you are a Canadian-born Hari Krishna monk, also known as the Walking Monk, mm -hmm. and you're getting ready to walk across America. You've previously walked across Canada four times, covering over 17,000 miles. Can you talk a little more about your background and also the reason that you're walking across America? Okay. Well, sure. I guess um, I'm a product of the uh, 50s generation, 60s, you know, the counterculture. And at that time, uh, you would uh, want to experiment with life a little bit and live slightly dangerous. So I wanted to do something a little different, and uh, I decided I'd become a monk in the Hare Krishna tradition, which has uh, roots from India and which is uh, kind of like directions. The Beatles were very influenced by the Bhakti movement from India, uh, the chanting mantras, especially George Harrison. So whatever the Fab Four did, you know, we kind of listened to them. And, you know, they were kind of like they were the trailblazers of the time. And so anyways, I, I thought, let me, let me check this out. And that was when I was 20 years old. And I, and I, and I liked it. I liked the, the life of um, austerity, simplicity, uh, good food and good company and music being played and, and trying to do some community services at the same time. Certainly. Now, uh, you're going to be walking from New York City to San Francisco mm -hmm. in a, uh, in a, ne next year in 2016. And right now, you're training, you're walking uh, from Boston to Pennsylvania. Could you talk about why you're going to be walking across America? Well, um, this year for us, those of us who are members of the Hare Krishna tradition, it's significant because it's the 50th anniversary of when our teacher came, when he came to in, uh, from India and uh, landed on American soil at Boston Harbor. That was in September 65. So that's why I was on a cruise with a whole bunch of friends to commemorate that. And so this walk, which I'm doing currently, it is a, wa a warm-up walk for the Cross U.S. Uh, venture. And uh, I'm basically sort of retracing the steps, at least symbolically, of our teacher. He came to Boston, then the uh, ocean liner that took him over from India uh, brought him to uh, New York City. From there, quickly he went thereafter to uh, spend about one month in Butler, Pennsylvania, where he was, his sponsors lived. And then from there, shortly thereafter, he went to New York to start the mission, and we got registered as the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. So that, that's the route I'm taking right now. And then what happened was, you know, the, the Lower East Side of New York was the happening place in the 60s, and, and there was a whole other thing going on in the, on the West Coast. So our guru went to the Haight-Ashbury area in, in Bay District, San Francisco. And so I'll be walking from, uh, from New York City to San Francisco on the, what I understand is the oldest uh, highway or the first highway built 
in the U.S., maybe, I guess, in the world. Right. And it goes straight across. It's kind of practically like a, like a straight line, the old Lincoln Highway, so it has historical significance. And, of course, I'm walking for my guru. And I guess in a broader sense, um, I like to think my walk is for... It's uh, for honoring our teachers, uh, walking for our teachers. And I guess it's a group of people that's kind of underrated, in many ways underappreciated and undervalued. Uh, and uh, it's like a, if you come from a tradition, or let's say maybe in the 50s, you did have that kind of reverence. It's something I guess we've lost a little bit, you know. And certainly the tradition that I adapted to, you know, the more, uh, let's say, as, uh, ascetic lifestyle, with roots from India, you know, you would have great respect for your guru. And I figure it doesn't hurt to have a little more R-E-S-B-E-C-T, you know, Aretha Franklin <laughs> <laughs> in, in, in the world, you know. You can check out my full interview with The Walking Monk, airing on HCAM News Focus, and also available on our website and YouTube page. Coming up next on HCAM News, we will let you know what the Hopkinton Country Club Charitable Gala is all about, and Courtney will let you know everything coming up on HCAM with our HCAM Insider. You're tuned in to HCAM News. Don't go anywhere. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of healthcare options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hi, we are the girls from Girl Scout Troop 72969 from Hopkinton. We would like to thank Mr. Trojan for the awesome tour of the HCAM studio. If you are interested in fun and adventurous field trips, we recommend one, to learn a Girl Scout troop. And two, visiting HCAM to see how local television is created and produced. We also want to give a shout out to Kalala Supermarket to thank Dale for our Girl Scout troop tour. And for always giving us a space to set up our cookie booth. Welcome back to HCAM News. The Hopkinton Country Club Charitable Organization hosted their annual fundraising gala, which helps support at-risk youth and families. It was a Hollywood theme and featured a photo booth in addition to dinner and dancing. Guests arrived coming down a red carpet, followed by a mock Oscars type interview. We are so excited to be here tonight at the Country Club. This is Seth. Hi. And I'm Penelope from the S&P Show that I know you're all so familiar with. Tonight we're going to see so many people coming to raise money for such great causes, Seth. Isn't that exciting? That's right. And hopefully we learn a few things about these people too and how everybody out here can also learn how to be fabulous like a lot of the celebrities that we'll see here tonight. So if you watch our show, you're going to see so many fabulous people and tonight is no exception. So tune in as we say, who is going to come tonight to the Country Club? Tune in. The Hopkinton Country Club Charitable Organization hosted their annual fundraising gala, which helped support at-risk youth and families. It was a Hollywood theme, and guests arrived coming down a red carpet. Seth and Penelope from the well-known, or maybe not so well-known, S&P show interviewed guests Hollywood style as they walked through the door. Look absolutely fabulous. So what what time did you guys get up this morning to prepare for this evening? I'll let you answer. Oh, hours in advance, hours. <laughs> I, I do have a quick form. And so which member of Duck Dynasty are you related to? Oh, wow! Well, I, I think they're nice. I love it. It's not often you see a trimmed, nice one in, with the Duck Dynasty, you know. You know. Yeah, that, I was, well, you look fantastic. But enjoy yourself. Thank you, thank you. And tonight is their really our signature, signature gala event fundraiser. Um, we have given over $500,000, over half a million dollars in donations to local area community organizations that are supporting the most at-risk youth and families that live in these communities um, that, that often need a lot of extra supports. They've got a lot of obstacles facing them and so we, we fund the areas in youth development around mentoring, around um, leadership development skills 
and surface up programs like a partner, our partner, Maisie Mentoring Program, who is our signature grantee of the evening tonight, which will be awarding a grant this evening. And one of their mentees, Veronica D'Souza, who will be speaking as well, um, telling her story about about her mentoring experience. And so it's it's special to be a part of this night. We're hoping to raise $100,000 to give back to these local organizations. This is a, a volunteer board of directors from the, from the country club that got together six years ago and really wanted to, 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 to give back, to pay it forward and do what we could in our communities in the area. And, and so far this has um, been a huge success and so we're really happy to have everybody here. Big events tonight. It's a gala, live, red carpet auction kind of night. We're doing a little Hollywood theme, hence the gold dress, <laughs> which we wouldn't normally wear. Um, so we've got not only just amazing food stations, we've got a whole like paparazzi little photo session going on, and we'll have um, a big gala event in the ballroom coming up in about an hour, which will feature our president talking a bit about the foundation. We have Marty Martinez, who's the president of Mass Mentoring Program, which is the largest and, and real signature state agency um, that, that serves and provides resources to the field of mentoring. He's speaking, followed by Veronica D'Souza from Maisie Mentoring Program, who will share her story. And then we'll kind of hit, hit right into the live auction. And we've got five awesome items for the live auction, including an amazing trip to southern France, as well as a bucket list golf trip for you golf fanatics to Bandon Dunes um, in Oregon. And so some big, big things, and um, we hope to make it just a fun night and, and with a lot of you know, generosity to give back to some kids that need it. I also caught up with the heads of two of the main organizations that the event raised funds for, Marty Martinez of Mass Mentoring and Alol Maisie of the Maisie Mentoring Program. Mass Mentoring helps promote programs to strengthen adult-child relationships, and the John Maisie program helps raise fundraising to help high school students who face tremendous adversity on their path to success. Mass Mentoring is an organization that uh, is fueling the movement for empowering youth-adult relationships all across Massachusetts. Our goal is to ensure that every young person, regardless of where they live or where they come from, has a connection to a caring adult, a mentor, someone who can guide them and support them, and ensure that they can reach their full potential. Our real goal is to make sure that uh, organizations that provide mentors and support young people do it effectively, do it in a measurable way, and do it in a high quality way so young people get what they need to be successful. I'm super excited to be here tonight. I'm uh, speaking a little bit about not only mass mentoring and what we do, but more importantly about the power of relationships. Um, how important it is that young people have these relationships. I'm going to tell some stories to how people kind of illustrate and understand the relationships really matter for young people. So I'm excited to be here and help the foundation raise lots of money to support the work that they want to do in the community on behalf of young people. All right, and if someone wanted to find out more about uh, Mass Mentoring, where could they go? Yeah, they can go to massmentors.org um, to learn a lot of information and also ways to get involved in their own community. Hi, my name is Lowell Maisie. I'm a co-founder of the John Andrew Maisie Memorial Foundation and the sponsor of the Maisie Mentoring Program for at-risk high school teenagers. The, uh, the foundation was started by my family when our 26-year-old son was killed by a drunken driver back in 1997. He uh, was very community conscious and was especially concerned about young people who, through no fault of their own, faced very steep odds against success. So back in 1998, we started the foundation and dedicated it to mentoring students who, for, for reasons beyond their control, uh, uh, were possibly not going to realize their full potential. We have mentored over 650, matched them with volunteers from area companies uh, with amazing success. We, uh, we have a goal program that the students uh, follow through on. Uh, they set academic goals, they set career option goals, they set uh, college, uh, college research goals and they're rewarded for their accomplishments with incentive awards, which uh, they, they receive at events in which their parents are invited. The Hopkinton uh, Country Club Charitable Foundation has been very supportive of our efforts and uh, has kind of adopted us 
um, as their charitable uh, giving for 1995, and we really appreciate that. And we look forward to working with them in the future to expand our ability to help at-risk young high school students. Certainly a great event for a great cause. You can find more information about the Country Club Charitable Gala on our website, hcam.tv. It's now time for our question of the week, and this week we want to know, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be and why? If you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be and why? Anywhere in the world to live, for me, would be Cape Cod, eating seafood every day. Hopkinton, Massachusetts. Great community. They've been supportive of our personal cause. Uh, and we'd like to vacation, uh, spend our summers on Martha's Vineyard. Oh, definitely St. Martin. Yep. Love the tropics. Yeah. Definitely St. Martin. The food is awesome. Beaches are great. Yeah. I'd stay right here in New England. I just love New England. I can't live anywhere without snow, as weird as that sounds. And it just, I love New England. Can I say Hopkinton? Can I? Absolutely. I'm saying Hopkinton. I just love our, our character. Um, Costa Rica because it's always left at the little band. Um, let's say California. Um, I, I would live in Australia. I would have a bunch of different houses in the world. Uh, like one in every state. Yeah. Uh, if I could choose a place to live, it would probably be Italy because I love food and they have the best. Um, North Carolina, because <laughs> it's nice. I used to live there. I would live in Colorado because it never rains. There's lots to do, and it's a nice, nice place to live. Um, anywhere in New England, I don't think I can leave. It's an amazing place with amazing people. <laughs> uh, if I could live anywhere in the world, it'd be right here in Hopkinton, because it's such a great town. I don't know where that place is. All I know is that one day I'm going to strap my snowblower to the roof of my car, and I'm going to drive south until somebody stops me and says, hey, what's that? Don't forget to submit your response on our Facebook page under the Question of the Week video or on our website under the Question of the Week article. There is a whole lot of programming coming up on the HCAM channels. To get you all caught up with everything you need to know, here is Courtney with our HCAM Insider. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Friday, October 30th at 8 p.m., the ladies of Hopkinton Coffee Break share Halloween memories and spooky stories. The you, little girl would be back behind. You, would, you could cut right behind down the railroad tracks and between the two businesses. And she'd Every be out there. And night, she'd be, day, What did she look like to you? She, no, she's out there a lot. She'd be like, hey there. <gasps> no. And, stuff, and I would just bolt and she disappears. On Saturday, October 31st at 1.30 p.m., it's girls soccer versus Ashland. And at 3.30 p.m., the volleyball team takes on Frontier Regional. On Monday, November 2nd at 6.30 p.m., Mary Lou Mansfield shares her poetry inspired by family and holidays on Senior View. The heart pounds within the chest feathered with armor. The call exhorts the man with wings of gold. On Wake Up and Smell the Poetry at 7 p.m., poet Lauren becker Macius shares original poetry inspired by life events. Three deer run past, almost at your feet, and you yell at them to stop, but they are wild and run faster because you are wild too, just an animal standing upright, holding what you're too poised to eat. At 8.30 p.m., the major causes of hearing loss and how it plays into overall health are discussed on Physician Focus. Ear infections can cause hearing loss, uh, ear injury, head injury, uh, ear surgery. Um, those are, I think, the common things mm -hmm. that we see. On Tuesday, November 3rd at 6.30 p.m., the Board of Selectmen meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Thursday, November 5th at 6.30 p.m., Dr. Kenneth Blanchard will discuss menopausal hormone replacement therapy in the next Hopkinton Drug Lecture Series, live on HCAM TV. Live on HCAM Ed at 7 p.m., the school committee meeting will air. On Sunday, November 8th at 10 a.m., the planning board meeting from November 2nd will air. If you want to stay up to date on all of our new HCAM programming, visit hcam.tv newsupdates to sign up for our HCAM Insider Newsletter. 
You can even sign up for our daily news updates for all the latest Hopkinton happenings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will wrap up this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook pages. And we'd like to thank all our followers, over 600 followers on Twitter and over 2,000 on Facebook. Thank you very much for your support. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and happy fall. Open door.